it's Ed Martin, president of the Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. Great to be back with you. We're still fact-checking Mrs. America, the Hulu series. This time we're checking on Phyllis's background. Uh, the Mrs. America series takes some liberties with what Phyllis actually did in her life and how she accomplished things. If you want to find out more, go to remember, go to realmrsamerica.com, realmrsamerica.com. We got a ton of resources there to find out even more of the facts, especially about Phyllis's legacy and her long career, her record, which is available there. And uh, Mrs. America, we're going to expose what I would say is a shoddy portrayal of Phyllis Schlafly's life and work. Let's do it right now. You know, it, one of the things about Phyllis Schlafly that they breeze past in Mrs. America is they make it sound like she sort of just came upon this ERA fight and it was something new to her. She had a background of almost three decades of political organizing. She ran her first campaign as the campaign manager for a candidate for Congress in 1946 in St. Louis. By the way, that candidate won for office. He became a congressman. Phyllis at that time wrote the speeches, ran the campaign. She did the press releases. That was in 1946 at the tender age of 22. From 1946 to the early 1970s, Phyllis was attending uh, Republican national conventions. Not one, not two, five of them. She'd been to five national conventions. She'd written a book that sold three million copies. She had become a national voice on the problem of Soviet defense policy and what the American policy should be should be herself. So this wasn't her first fight. In fact, I would say it was the culmination of a career. She was now in her mid 40s when the ERA started, a career of understanding politics and understanding campaigns and people. Watch this clip and you'll see how uh, they try to depict Phyllis being shut out of a DC meeting. Watch this and I'll tell you the truth behind it. Sign a treaty. Well, I think we should focus specifically on our biggest concerns in the treaty, which are the ABM limitations. Now, our superiority in MIRVs does not compensate for the Russian superiority in ICBMs, SS9s. Hey, listen, could, could you take notes for us? You know, so that we have an unofficial record. Well, you probably have the best penmanship of anyone here. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Margaret can grab you a pad. Okay. Let me write well, this meeting actually happened. That's true. There was a meeting and it, um, it was Phil Crane was present, Congressman Crane. But Phyllis wasn't invited uh, as either the note taker or for any other reason. In fact, Phyllis Schlafly called this meeting. Phyllis Schlafly invited Phil Crane, Congressman Phil Crane, as well as generals and admirals and others to attend the meeting. You see, in the 1960s and in, or late in the 50s, as Phyllis wrote on defense policy, she became co-author and friends with retired admirals and generals and all. And we have uh, in the records of our massive archive in St. Louis at the Phyllis Schlafly Center, all of these details. If the Mrs. America producers and writers had even bothered to come and check, and we offered, by the way, they could have fact-checked this and found out. Here online at realmrsamerica.com, you can go there and see the invitation letter from Phyllis Schlafly to Congressman Phil Crane. She wasn't kept out or kept in or in meetings to do certain things. She was leading at that time. And now watch this. There's another clip here we'll watch about how they depict, Mrs. America depicts Phyllis not getting along with conservatives. Watch this. Phyllis, we did it. We defeated the Equal Rights Amendment in the Sooner State. You did that. Well, they jammed it through the Senate with just a voice vote, no hearing, but we were able to keep it from being passed in the House. And all thanks to that one little article in your newsletter. I handed it to every legislator. Oh, well, that's swell, and I couldn't be more proud. So now I'm thinking I should call our friends in other states and encourage them to do the same. It's a winnable fight. Yes, well, it, in Oklahoma. Can you send me copies of your mailing list? Roger! I'm, I'm sorry, and I am going to have to call you back. I have children crawling all over me. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. All right, good to talk to you. It's taken me years to build up my mailing list. That's my network. You know, and the fact that Anne doesn't understand that suggests she doesn't know a whole lot about politics. Well, 
This is very important. In the 1960s, Phyllis had been one of the prominent Republican leaders. She was the vice, first vice uh, president of the National, Federated, uh, National Federation of Republican Women. She had a network across the country. It's true that when Ann Patterson called Phyllis and told her the news just a few months after that February 1972 PSR, that was exciting news. Oklahoma rolled back the ERA uh, support, and things like that were happening all across the country with the PSR. But that's where the uh, Mrs. America people start making it up. Phyllis actually was the one who said to Ann Patterson, hey, I've got this network of eagles. Why don't you call them and tell them what you did? In fact, Phyllis's personal notes from that period, again, in our archives, they show that it was Phyllis, and she wrote this in her notes, I said to Ann, that's wonderful, and I'll send you $200 to make the phone calls to all those other eagles to show them the path to success. Phyllis Schlafly empowered all of her colleagues, but especially women. She didn't work against them. She taught them things and she let them loose. And uh, all this depiction of, of kind of uh, how she was clinging to uh, her resources, her influence, it just doesn't hold water. And it doesn't go back to the fact, doesn't uh, comport with the facts of the time. Watch this clip here where they, they try to depict uh, Phyllis getting a little bit mean or snarky or not nice in personal attacks and how she speaks. It's not true, but watch this clip. Maybe that's the liberationist goal. I mean, after all, their hero is Gloria Steinem, a single childless woman nearing 40. But she is the sort of uh, miserable, uh, pathetic woman they aspire to be. She wants some kind of constitutional cure for her personal problems. And perhaps that is why the liberationists are trying to sow these seeds of discontent among we happily married women. They want us to join them in some new sisterhood of frustrated togetherness. Because none of them can find a man who wants to marry them. <laughs> Look, there are decades and decades of coverage of Phyllis Schlafly. There's not one moment that people say she acted like that uh, video showed. In fact, the liberal uh, Chicago uh, newspaper woman, Carol Felsenthal, who came down and wrote a biography, she's a liberal, she loved the ERA, she was wanted things to go. She got to know Phyllis Schlafly so well, and she said, I never saw this kind of conduct. I never saw mean-spirited uh, things. In fact, Phyllis Schlafly, I believe it was from her faith, when I talked to her about it, she said, we never attack other people. She meant we never attack other people. She never told me why, but I believe she was so committed to the ideal and to the teaching that every human being is made in the image and likeness of God that she didn't believe in attacking other people and she never did it. Now the feminists and Mrs. America, they spent a lot of time attacking Phyllis personally and that happened all the time. But you know, Phyllis used to talk about that. She's had certain prayers she would say when she was attacked and she said she had to teach herself to let the attacks just roll off her back uh, like water on a duck's back, I'd heard her say. Phyllis was once in a debate with Betty Friedan and, uh, and she said, quote, Phyllis Schlafly, quote, the ERA proponents have almost given up on arguing for affirmative consequences that the amendment would have. They've resorted to abusing their opponents and to hurling epithets at them. That's what Miss America's doing. That's what too many people in this, uh, in this world do when they disagree with someone like Phyllis Schlafly or a conservative, we see it all the time. Mrs. America, so far, we've only seen a few hours, it tries to turn Phyllis Schlafly into a novice who is fighting against the oppression of men. But that doesn't, you know, comport with reality. They also try to turn her into a selfish person who was clinging to power and clinging to her ideas and, and made attacks rather than good arguments. It just didn't happen. It's all a Hollywood lie. They've spent $50 million and they've made their lives. We have the historical documentation in her personal archives in St. Louis at the Phyllis Schlafly Center. And we offered it to the Mrs. America producers and writers and to anyone else to look at this historic lady and what her life meant and how she operated. You please stay tuned here and go to realmrsamerica.com to find out more. We've got more fact checking to do, a lot more it looks like. And please pass this on to others so they'll share it with their friends and know the truth. What we love about showing their lies is telling the truth about a great American woman, Phyllis Schlafly. Talk to you soon.